Hey everybody, Bohush here, the casual expert speaking for photodeoxpro.com. And in this video, I want to introduce you to the latest adapter family we've introduced for Micro Four Thirds cameras. It's the Polar Throttle. Now, that name may sound familiar to you because we've talked a lot about our ND Throttle, which is a family of lens adapters with a built-in variable ND right inside the adapter. So we took that idea and we put a circular polarizer right into the Polar Throttle. Now you may ask, why would I want a circular polarizer all the time? Well, it's really nice for getting better contrast out of skies and clouds, cutting reflections when you're shooting water, uh, dehazing a scene overall, or also cutting reflections if you're looking through glass or a windshield. It's a really nice utility to have in your camera bag all the time. And by building it into the adapter, we make it really easy to just dial in as much as you need whenever you need it. Now, when you're shooting photo or video, you're not like recording the polarity of the light or anything like that. So you can't adjust that later in post. So this is a case where you need a filter in the real world while you're shooting and you need to get it right in the camera while you're there. And that's why we've got a circular polarizer built right into the polar drum. So I've got the Canon FD to Micro Four Thirds lens adapter here. Just pop your FD lens on there, turn in that ring, and it's on there like so. And then you take the whole assembly, pop it onto your Micro Four Thirds camera, mount it like any other lens. So this toothed ring is how you control the amount of circular polarization you're adding. And you can use a lens focusing rig with this if you like. Plus, certain models of the Polar Throttle have additional aperture control for lenses that need it. It's important to remember that the Polar Throttle is a manual lens adapter, so there's no electronic connection between the lens and the camera, so you're not going to get autofocus, auto aperture, or any of that kind of stuff. So just by adjusting this ring manually, I can see how much circular polarization I'm adding to this image. And by cutting the reflections coming off the water, I'm able to get a more pleasing image overall, and I see it in real time as it's happening. And this is critical both in photo and in video. So here are a couple other things to think about when you're shooting with a circular polarizer. You're gonna get your best effect by having the light come from behind the camera. That's gonna give you the nicest saturation and the overall effect of the circular polarizer is gonna be very strong. It'll work in other lighting situations as well, but the best results are gonna come from the light being behind the camera. Also, don't forget that when you kick in the polar throttle, you're gonna lose a little bit of light. Uh, it can be a stop or two, not anything that's a big deal. But this is why photographers and filmmakers will sometimes use a circular polarizer to kind of reduce the light level if it's really bright outside. Uh, that's nice to just bring things under control or to get shallow depth of field shooting effects even when conditions are really bright. So that is a look at the new polar throttle from Photo Deox. If you want to learn even more about how to make a circular polarizer a full-time addition to your camera bag, just click on the link down below this video. You'll be taken to a catalog page with all of the details. Also, click right here to subscribe so you can get more videos just like this one. My name's Bohush. Thanks for watching.